So we're in our storage unit, units, and we just won a storage auction maybe a week ago, and we weren't really allowed to film there or take pictures. So we unloaded everything and we started organizing it and finally got everything here, you know, centralized into our location. And, you know, we have a, a storage unit across the way. We have the storage unit here and probably 900 bottles of wine. Now, I love to drink wine. My wife loves to drink wine. Our friends love to drink wine. But we don't, we, we're not wine experts by any means. But I figured for the lack of a unveiling video at the storage unit, we'll just kind of, I'll show you what we got and kind of the enormity of what we got and then kind of what we're gonna do with it. So we'll kind of start here on the racks. Um, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven racks that were kind of stacked up in that storage unit. Not, they weren't full. They were probably a lit, as you can see, you know, how many high we've gone up. They were a little lower in the other storage unit than we have them stacked. But, you know, we're, I don't know how many are on the racks here but it will kind of give you an idea of what was in this storage unit. And this is just what's on the racks. If you look here on the shelf, these are full cases and they're too deep. You know, so you see two boxes back there, two, two. We'll show you some William Cole in here. This is a 2014 Cabernet. And then this, I believe, is, oh, this is the Corliss, um, I'm not sure, this is a 2006, I can't see what, uh, what variety of wine that is, but there's, you know, more, more cases, more cases down here, you know, that's also, you know, what, mostly two, but sometimes one. And then we have this crate. And I believe this is all white cottage. Um, I have a bottle I can show you. More cases. Um, unfortunately, while I can say, the good thing is they were stored in a climate controlled environment. I don't know what the climate control of a typical storage unit is, so I'm guessing it's in the low 70s, which is not ideal for wine storage, but um, it's not 100 degrees. So while it's not perfect, it's, it's not horrible. I guess it is horrible depending on who you ask. Um, this is, I mentioned the White Cottage earlier. There's different vintages of White Cottage and different blends, but this is, you know, what the White Cottage label looks like. We have some Oliveira Malbec and a Cabernet from the grade. And then there's just more cases of wine. You know, those are about too deep. And as you can see, a lot of them were stored um, cork up which is not how you want to store them. You want to store them on their sides to keep the cork moist. Um, and one of the things that we found is in opening, well, every, we've probably opened eight or nine bottles and, you know, tried them out, of course, because why wouldn't you if you have 900 bottles of wine? Um, there's the racks. There's another rack back there. I'm going to switch it around. Corks are unbelievably brittle. Like I said, or like I started to say, every single one of the corks we've tried to open, no matter how careful we've, um, no matter how careful we've been, they've, you know, broken half and we've had to kind of either fish pieces of cork out of the wine or, you know, try to fish the last half of the cork out. We were successful with one bottle and celebrated that win but i i'm anticipating just based on how a lot of the whoops excuse me uh, how a lot of these were stored that um we're going to encounter that quite a bit there's a lot of 
a lot of sediment on the side. Yeah, I guess, you know, from what I've been reading, when you're storing wine, you should quarter turn. If they're laying on their side, you quarter turn them periodically. I don't know what the interval is, but you quarter turn them to kind of keep the sediment from resting on a particular side. And a lot of these, you know, you'd look, you hold them up to the light and you can see the sediment stuck to the side, of, uh, you know, one side of the bottle. Again, not ideal. So what do we do with all of this? What do we do with 900 bottles, you know, between me, Dan, and some friends of ours? Well, first thought is, you know, we're going to sell it. Obviously, we can't... I'm going to set this up here real quick. So obviously, we can't sell this directly, you know, put it on eBay or, you know, say, hey, we got bottles of wine coming by. We can't do that. Uh, you need a liquor license for that. It's illegal. So our next option was let's, we'll get a hold of an auction house or we'll get a hold of you know, somebody who purchases wine. And um, so what we started doing is we, there was an app uh, called Seller Tracker, I believe. So we started cataloging our wines and kind of getting a value of what they think the wines are. Um, because some of these vintages go back to the, you know, 1990, late 1990s. And then all, I think the newest vintage we have is 20, 16 so they're you know there there's no new bottles in here um so we started cataloging them and you know kind of as i'm learning about it there you know you wines have what's called a drinking window and that usually occurs from what i understand at bottling so they'll say when they bottle it they'll say this is the window of years where it's going to be its best now Wine can still be enjoyed well outside of that window. It's just the only way we're going to tell if a wine here is good or not is to crack it open and try it. So we thought we're going to go that route. But as I start researching into that as well, a lot of these buyers of and auction houses, they want provenance. They want to know who owned it, where it came from, how it was stored, um, where do you have receipts for it? Um, they want to know the whole history. And this is one of their, when they're reselling the wine, that's one of their guarantees that they say, we guarantee provenance. We guarantee it was stored at, you know, 50 degrees. And unfortunately we can't do that. So now we cannot sell this. So on one hand, you look, because we paid $1,200 for the whole unit. Um, it's, a lot more wine than we thought. Like I was anticipating three to 400 bottles, or well, probably around 300 bottles. And as I started digging into it, it was like all the cases were full. The racks were, you know, I thought they were three high, but they were, you know, four, five, six high. So again, I'm. It, it's an estimate because we haven't done a hard count yet, but about nine, between eight and 900 bottles. Um, so we can't sell it. So while we're out the $1,200, you could look at it that way, or we gained 900 bottles of wine. And that's a lot of wine for, you know, we drink wine, but we're gonna have wine for a long time. And as I mentioned, like not all of this wine is gonna be good. That, you know, of the 10 bottles, we found one that was, had turned and it's a, it wasn't sour, it was just very, I guess the, the word I would use is like very syrupy, very sweet, and it wasn't a dessert wine or anything like that. Um, so, and it, you know, the, the red had turned to like a, a brownish red. Um, so I'll stop yabbing right now and I'll just start going through some of these wines and showing you. And if you guys, if you recognize anything or if there's something that we should pay attention to, like, hey, that's a good bottle. Let us know because, you know, we're learning, you know, and there may be some out there that uh, know it a lot better than we do. And I, I actually, I guarantee that. So let's, uh, let me turn the camera around and I will, uh, I'll start showing you some bottles. So I'll start here on the shelf. And I know this was one of the pricier 
vintages and, and, and types of wine here. It's a Cabernet 2007. Again, I don't know if it's any good, but last price I saw on this was around $200 on uh, wine. It, it's a wine searcher website. I can't remember the exact name of it. Um, and we've got some metaphor. Several bottles of that. Let me come down here. Let's see if I can find any. Lambron family. Show. What's this? Show kit vineyards. Luna. That's my dog's name. A lot of trenchard uh, vineyards there. I think this whole side over here is that trenchard vineyards, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Some Comstock, some Borman vineyards. Let's go over here to the cases. And some, you know, we did find some wines that were um, unlabeled, and they had they they were written here, you know, they like this one has a sticker. Some were just handwritten, you know, what is like a 2012 Syrah. Um, I recognize that one from like a grocery store type wine. Um, some Sterling Cabernet. A lot of these are Cabernets and Syrahs. Not, not very many whites, or we do have some Chardonnays, but they're, whoever owned this was, a, was mostly a red wine drinker, or they drank all their whites already and didn't leave any in the storage. Got some poem sellers. Yeah, so here's one of these unlabeled. And then if you look down here, they show Syrah Cuvée, Cuvée, however you pronounce that, 2010. And like I said, one of, one of the things we're going to have to do is get these stored properly. Um, either turn them upside down like those are, or get them on their side in a wine rack so that to try and keep that cork moist, even though. I'm not sure if at this point it's a moot point, but we will we'll try and do our best to keep this as good for as long as we have it and until we drink it. But, you know, and this isn't a typical storage unit auction video because, like I said, we, we weren't allowed to, well, I guess we could have filmed, but, you know, they... They did mention they didn't want any filming there and you know I just I didn't want to push the limit I just wanted to get in there and get out and then we figure out you know filming and things like that later so Safari now Safari I believe here in California this there was a wine Safari that you could sign up for and you would I, again I'm, my I didn't ever go on it, but from what I understood, you would drive around on the tram and you know get to see like giraffes and stuff like that while you're drinking wine. There's another metaphor. Um, so and there's a couple of cases over there that's full of that safari, and I'm assuming that's that safari wine is from that safari um, adventure. I think my wife went on that. Um, so that's that. So that's really all I have for you. Um, Dan couldn't make it, he was busy today. Um, and one thing I wanna tell everybody, like it's been months since we posted anything and it's not because we're busy or anything like that. It's, we'll just say we're lazy. And coming in 2025, we are definitely gonna start and try and do more um, storage unit videos maybe collection videos, but I think we're gonna focus more on storage units uh, next year. And, you know, sorry this one wasn't your typical 
the wine locker wasn't your typical unveiling because I, I love that part of it, you know, opening up the door and then digging through the boxes. But I did want to share and see if anybody knew what some of this wine was or, you know, give us, you know, mention in the comments or any something like that. Um, but like I said, if you want to see more of our videos, please like and subscribe um, on our channel and keep an eye out for next year. You know, starting in 2025, we're going to, you know, try and our goal is one a month, but we're going to try and do more than that. And I've just, I'm going to set a soft expectation for us in hopes that we can achieve that, which I'm, I'm sure we can, but you know, this isn't our day or our normal job. So it's like, we're going to try and fit it in as, as often as we can. Um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed watching the wine or seeing the wine, but, um, if not, you know, we will talk to you next time and we'll go from there. Thanks.